So we're going to continue talking about specifications. We're going to go back to the candy machine example that we considered in the requirements section. When we're thinking about the design, whether it's a program or an object like the candy machine, after we've got our requirements, uh, probably the first thing we want to think about is the user interface. What's going to be in the user interface? What is the user going to interact with? And what are the possible events that can occur? And we're going to base our design around those events. So with the candy machine, uh, if we think of the objects and their events, well, the machine has a coin slot that the user can put a coin in. There's a candy slot that opens so the candy can come out. There's a handle that the user can turn or not. They can attempt to turn. And there's a coin receptacle uh, where the coins go. Now, those are the only objects that the user, the person trying to buy candy, is going to have any kind of interaction with. And, you know, when we think about it, if just putting the coin in the slot, there is nothing much is going to happen until the person actually tries to turn the handle. So turning the handle is the event that we want to focus on because that's the one that's going to trigger whether something else is going to happen or not. So our idea, if you remember from our design, was that turning the handle tries to send a coin to the coin receptacle. And the handle, first of all, only allows correct coins through as much as possible and won't turn otherwise. The handle should not turn if the coin receptacle is full. And basically, this machine's going to be designed by someone like a mechanical engineer who can figure out how to make these requirements actually work or come back and tell us it's too expensive what their trade-offs are, etc. We're not going to look at that aspect. But let's see if we can look at the logical flow of this solution and putting it in a flow chart. Okay, so we're going to look at a flow chart for this and this will also show you the use of some of the kinds of flow chart boxes that we talked about for things like uh, conditionals and choices and so on. Okay, so here we're starting and our first event is to attempt to turn the handle. And that's really the only event that we're going to consider having a design for. So the first thing we want to know is there a correct coin in the slot. So the machine will do its best to determine that. And if there's not, if the slot is empty or there's a bad coin in it, then we don't want it to turn. So the handle does not turn and that's the end of the process. Now, if there is a correct coin, there's a further step. So we come over here on the yes side, and now we have to ask, does the coin receptacle have room to accept that coin? Because if not, we want it to kind of stop from turning and nothing to happen. So if the answer here is no, we're, we're going to reuse this event of the handle does not turn. And again, that's the end. If there is room, so there's a correct coin and the receptacle has room, then we want the handle to turn the coin to go into the receptacle, and the candy slot to open. And if there's candy in the machine, it'll come out. And remember, this is one of our other use cases. You put in a coin, you turn the handle, there's no candy, nothing comes out. But the candy slot opens, and that's what we're concerned about here as far as our design. So another thing to notice, I try to reuse these boxes as much as possible. Sometimes it's okay to have a duplicate, you know, if things would be horribly messy otherwise. But in this case, I was able to bring these back together to reuse this event. And I ended up on the same end, which is also nice. So if you have choices, a lot of times things can then come back together. And if so, it makes for a more understandable flowchart to do that. So Think about the relationship between the use cases and this flowchart because uh, the setup is pretty different. We only have one event that requires a process trying to turn the handle. Now trying to turn the handle was an element in each of our use cases and the setup was different for each use case and the outcome was different. So what we did was abstract information from several use cases to design this event of trying to turn the handle. And once you've done that, then here's where the tests come in. You can already make use of them. Uh, once you have your flow chart, you can go through the flow chart using the test and see if the path through the flow chart is going to get you to the outcome that you wanted in terms of the test. So 
this, this is the way we structure things and use a test even in the design phase to double check that the, the design is correct. The, you can call this kind of design an event-driven design, and it is a highly effective way of designing processes.